Thanks for joining me back for another exciting episode of my Healers interview series. Today I have someone who's really smart, inspiring, and skillful, Leslie Paparo, and she will be talking about personal and professional coaching. Please don't forget to subscribe and hit the little bell next to your subscription button so you can get notified every time we post another one of these great interviews. Thanks for being here with me, everybody, and here's Leslie Paparo. All right. Hi, everyone. I am here today with Leslie Paparo, um, personal and professional coach. And Leslie, welcome and thank you. Hi, Kate. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm super excited to dig in and kind of learn about your coaching process. Before we talk about coaching specifically, is there just a brief little intro you want to give us about yourself and how you came to the work you do? Sure. Um, I used to be a teacher in my um, previous life, I say, before I had kids. I was an elementary school teacher in New York City. I have my master's in elementary education. And so I always saw myself as a teacher. It's like a natural ability of mine, one of my strengths. Um, and then I took a big pause until a cousin of mine called me up and said she had this great opportunity for me to come work for her company called the Fast Forward Group. And the Fast Forward Group does um, professional and corporate coaching. They do like workshops on communication and vision writing and leadership. And part of their, their, the company is also includes executive coaching. So, but what I started doing was writing 360s for them, for the coaching clients. And as I was writing them, I said, you know, I, I don't want to just be writing these. I want to, I want to be the coach. So I went back and got my um, certification from Coaches Training Institute, which is now the coactive model. And it took me about a year and then I got certified through coactive and also through the ICF and started coaching. All right. So there's, I like that you have an evolution that starts with teaching and I like that you're able to allude to that as a strength of yours. I know maybe you can speak a little bit more at some point in our inter interview about how to like cultivate and bring your strengths up to the surface. Sure. Yeah. Um, and maybe that's a good segue for us to kind of ask you about your lens of your coaching work. And um, I know that you do personal and professional and executive coaching, all these different kinds of coaching. Can you just sort of explain your practice? Sure, sure. Um, the coaching model that I was trained under and that I, I believe very deeply in is that people are whole. We're, we're creative, resourceful, and whole. And big part of that is seeing your strengths and knowing what your strengths are. And, you know, and I, I was thinking about this when I was preparing talking for talking to you and a lot of the people you talk to, you call healers. And I don't, I don't really consider myself a healer. Um, I consider myself a guide mm -hmm. because I'm kind of guiding people in the direction that they want to go. I'm, we're not actually healing people. That would be like therapy. Um, so coaching comes from the place of people are already have what they need inside of them. Mm. We just have to access it okay. and ask deep questions to get there. Right. So it's like a holistic approach of sort of trusting the self and trusting that inner guidance and uncovering things. Uncovering. Exactly. So in the, the kind of counterpart to the strengths, do you help people to identify their sort of edge or their challenging aspects of self? Yes. As well? Yes, we always look at what our challenges are. Um, one of the questions, you know, before I coach a person, I send like some pre-work before every session. So we look at both um, and we dig, dig deep. I feel like a lot of people are confused about the difference between coaching and therapy. And sometimes I don't know that people know where to begin when they are looking for help. Can yeah. you speak to that from your lens? Sure. So therapy and, and, Caveat here, I'm not an expert on therapy, but in, from my perspective, therapy looks at the past and digs deeply or more deeply into why we do what we do and how our past impacts our future and our current self. And coaching moves us forward. It, coaching is about moving the action forward um, and using big open-ended questions to get at reflection and, and get some growth. Um, 
and it coaching also assumes that the person is is in a healthy mindset mm -hmm. you know if there's any signs of um, suicide ideation or some kind of lack of daily functioning then we would for sure and we're actually obligated under the coaching or um, code of ethics to recommend someone for therapy okay or, or you know deeper professional help right do you do some kind of screening beforehand in the beginning to kind of discern that or is it something that you learn pretty quickly in your session yeah I, do, I don't I don't screen for it but it, I think I would figure it out pretty quickly okay so yeah. it's safe and to that's not to say sometimes people can be in therapy and be coached at the same time mm -hmm. maybe but, that's a good dynamic too because you in order to sort of move forward, sometimes you have to heal the past yes. first and kind of move through those barriers. Yes. Okay. Yes. So it's safe to say then that if, if somebody wants coaching, they need to be in a stable psychological and emotional space. Correct. Yes. Maybe as evidenced by, by what kind of things would you say, like not having emotional roller coaster in their everyday life, feeling like they have relative agency over their, um, their reactions and their ups and downs or they're not. Yes. Like and, and it's okay to have ups and downs. It's just, mm -hmm. if it's not impacting your daily functioning. Right. Um, and for people who are just in a really like collapsed state of mind, like that's right. probably a space for therapy first. Right. Yes. Or like sign of depression, you know, mm -hmm. that would be helpful to be in therapy first. Right. Do you have any methods if, therapeutic work comes to the surface in coaching, but someone has a really good handle on it. Maybe they've done a lot of therapeutic work and they know about some trauma or they know about some patterns and then they can talk to you with kind of that wise mind perspective about that trauma. Do you have kind of a method that can use what they already know from their therapy work and sort of fuel it into their coaching work? Sure. Um, I would say that's where I would bring in, I have this, this work called the captain where it's like your inner captain. And if the person has done work already on themselves, they probably know that, that deep voice within themselves that's, that they could call up and use. But then sometimes in coaching, I will, I will access it. We'll use like imagery to go get it. And it's using that voice to then impact your behaviors. Mm -hmm. Right. So in the type of therapy, one of the types of therapy that I practice called internal family systems, we refer to that as the true, true self or core self, right. which would be like someone's essence of who they right. really are when they're not triggered, when they're not in pattern. Right. And so that sounds like a really valuable piece. You call it the captain or I call it your, your inner superpower or some, there's another methodology um, called positive intelligence that I studied under that they call it your sage your sage voice so it's all the same yeah like wise mind presence mm -hmm. higher self i right. feel like there's a lot of different names for that right. so um with that knowledge of the captain i know you also do a lot of kind of work with the inner critic within people mm -hmm. does the captain work are you working from that place of true self and captain or do you have any other methods about working with the critical yeah person? well the captain we use the captain and then along with the captain comes the crew and you have this whole crew of of i call them voices you know they're they're your your helpers and they work to quiet the inner critic and the inner critic is that that voice in your head that just incessantly talks to you like it's the meanest girlfriend you have or the or not even friend it's like that mean roommate or that it's just that constant voice that keeps you up at night and it's the way you wouldn't talk to your best friend like but we talk to ourselves that way and so we use i use the the captain and the crew to quiet it down mm -hmm. yeah how, how do you do that do you have specific processes or visualizations things that you use for that or is it in dialogue mostly it, it's mostly in dialogue but i do use visualizations and um and i have I might have a client like close their eyes and go to a place where they felt their safest, they felt their best self. Um, sometimes it's in childhood and 
and if it is in childhood, you know, we, I would have them look and see what they were doing, what who was there, what did it look like. We get all the details, and we call up that inner child to to you know to talk to the yourself and to quiet you know the the mean voice. Mm, I love that. Really <laughs> forcing from the wisdom of the body and the psyche yeah. with all the layers of learning that we acquire through our lifetime. It's yeah. really powerful. It and is. it reminds me too of the things that we've learned from neuroscience that the brain doesn't know the difference between visualization and true action. So we know this with athletes who visualize yeah. their soccer game or their ski run. When you visualize something, it does facilitate a reinforcement in the neuro circuitry of the brain yeah. so that your body can feel like it's doing that thing. And so it's really amazing in therapy and in coaching, it sounds too, that you can facilitate repair and strengthening within yourself just by visualizing some of those strengths or resources that you hold yeah. in. And also it's, it's, there's another methodology um, called this, this positive intelligence model from Shazad Shamin. Okay. And he uses these like repetitions where you, you, go kind of like go into yourself and you use your finger, your touch. And as you focus more on the body and the sensations, you stop that constant talking, you know, in your head. And, and as you practice it, practice it, it becomes stronger. You, know, you get better and better at it. And it, it is, it's a complete mind body connection. Mm -hmm. It sounds like a mindfulness practice. Yes, it is like a mindfulness practice too. Right. Yeah. So it's just about coming into presence in any way that you possibly can. And I think using that sensation experience in the body is one of the best ways to anchor back into this moment. Absolutely. Where this is the only moment where we can affect any change, really do anything productive in our life because the past is done and the future right. hasn't happened. So right. how do you work that into your coaching model of working toward the future and toward the goals, sort of using that present moment and that wisdom of the now to facilitate what people want in the future? A big part of that is, is vision writing. We have um, in, in the corporate practice that I do, we have everybody write a vision. And the vision is um, where you see yourself in a year from now. What does it look like? And we actually have everybody physically write like a one page or two page document on, and it's, it's being very intentional about what you want and what you want it to look like. So it's almost like visualizing it. And it's very future focused. And I actually, I was looking through your, when I was looking at your YouTube channel, the one you have with all the quotes, mm -hmm. I found one quote, I have to just read it because it was so good. It was from Dr. Joe Dispenza. And it said, the best way to predict your future is to create it. Yeah. And that's, who else is gonna create it but you? And so we have everybody, when they write this vision, it's the act of writing it and the act of speaking it that combines to make it much more likely to happen. You're actually, there's some kind of statistic like you're 42% more likely to have it happen if you write it down and share it. Mm -hmm. I think there's a lot of power in naming things, right? Whether it's like naming your fear or naming the problem or if yeah. it's naming the, the goal or the dream. And sometimes naming it is terrifying because yeah. once you name it, you're like, oh no, now I have to try for it, right? right. Right. But so. that's, we call that playing big because if you, if you keep it to yourself, who's, who knows about like, who's going to know about it? Playing small, playing big. These are like really common phrases that we hear in the therapy community in coaching in spirituality in all yeah. different kind of arenas. So playing small and playing big through your lens, what does that look like? Well, playing big is, is being your true self. It's living up to your potential. It's following your dreams. It's, it's all those catchphrases. It's what's your purpose. Um, and then playing small is, you know, it's, it's all the opposite of that, but playing big means looking at what do you really want to do in this one life you have and then going for it and with intentionality and with specific steps and sometimes with a person who can help you, you know, a coach is, is the helper. Um, we're there to support you. We're there to, to cheerlead um, and to be and to hold you accountable. So that's a lot of what I do too. It's holding people accountable. I check in. Um, we write down specific steps you're going to take towards your goals, what actions, what habits you need to create, what habits you need to give up, 
What are you gonna say yes to? What are you gonna say no to? Um, and then what do you want your life to look like? It sounds like really brave work. So there is an aspect for sure of kind of funneling and incorporating your own courage and bravery into being a little bit vulnerable and taking some risks to sort of own that big life that maybe you have a deep longing for yeah. but have been held back from whatever reason. And now is the time because now is all that any of us have. So it sounds like part of your purpose as this guide is helping to sort of unveil the now. And unveil your values. What are your deeply, deeply held values? And we do that at the very beginning of a coaching engagement as well is I help people find what's most important. And when you know what's most important, you can take action. Yes. Yeah, I really appreciate work around values. I think it's helpful to crystallize them because most people understand the concept of core values, but how often do you really sit down with a pen and paper and write out what are the most important things to me in all of the world? Right. You know? And I yeah. also find it a powerful exercise to sort of write that list and then write another list about your core beliefs about yourself and the world and then really look at them together because if your beliefs and your values are aligned, then you've got all of this synergy helping you. But if, yeah, but if your beliefs and your values are misaligned or they're incongruent with each other, mm -hmm. then you're working against yourself. So right. like an example of this would be, you know, maybe somebody says my core value is family, but a core belief might be if I don't work like a dog and, you know, put in a 60 hour work week, I'm never going to have enough money to right. live my life. And so this this workaholic kind of pattern is not allowing that value of family to be in the center, right? And so yeah. looking at those lists together could be really helpful. Yeah. yeah, that's great. I love that. Yeah, so sounds like the value piece is big in your work too. Mm -hmm. Do you have um, specific experiences that you do around cultivating values? Sometimes it's as simple as looking at a list of values. You know, like there's this list that I have about I don't know, there could be like a hundred values on there. And I have people just circle their top 10 and then we kind of whittle them down until five, let's say, because it's hard to keep 10 top of mind. And sometimes I do another visualization where I'll take them through their best day and I make them go back to their, their most wonderful, perfect day. Where were they? What, who were they with? What were they doing? What did it look like? And out of that, you can kind of like tease out people's values. Oh, I like that. Yeah. Because that's sourcing from real life so people don't have to imagine anything. They already have what they need, which right. kind of goes along with your perspective of the whole person having everything they need within it's them. there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I really appreciate that. I like yeah. that a lot. So um, is there kind of a, a model of the way you move through a coaching relationship with people is there like a beginning a middle and an end or do some coaching relationships go on like some therapy relationships go on for yeah. years or decades but it yeah. doesn't seem like coaches do that no no we, we don't want them to go on for decades um at least i don't there there's a a very clear beginning where we sit down and we do something called design the alliance and it's that's where the true partnership comes in. It's not just about what I want or what I think this is gonna look like. It's what do you want? And what do you want from me as well? And we, we're in complete partnership with each other. And then I find out like what they, what they really come to me for. Like, what is it, what's your one big desire? What, what do you really want? And we, we keep track of that. And then so the kind of the coaching engagement goes, sometimes it goes in ups and downs, but you hope that it, follows this like kind of like an arc mm -hmm. and and sometimes they come to me and they say I only want six sessions and I say fine and sometimes it's 10 mm -hmm. and sometimes it, it could linger but I will put an end to it if I feel like we're complete okay and and, and a client's welcome to be completed anytime as well mm -hmm. is there a way where you know is there a feeling or an experience you look for in a client to know when they're complete when they've, when first, if, if they've tackled what they want to tackle, because sometimes it's a very clear um, outcome that they're looking for. I have this one client who um, had a project that he wanted to complete and he did. But when it starts to like, they start to like just bring 
various things to the engagement and that, you know, you could just kind of tell mm -hmm. when it's over, when okay. they don't need you anymore, right. when they have it. That would be a measure of growth, right? Yeah. Is to be able to seek a guide. You know, I'm thinking about Joseph Campbell's hero's journey where yeah. you, know, you kind of leave home and you go through all these challenges and adventures and along the way you pick up guides and you have learning and then you kind of return home. And so you're one of the guides that people yeah. might, you know, pick up along their journey and then they have to know when it's time that they don't need their guide go, anymore. Right. Go fly. And sometimes clients come back to me. You know, I have another client who she has young children and, and it was summertime and she was like, I don't know what to do, help. I, you know, I need to have, figure out how to structure this, my program and my day. And so we, we figured out together what she needed to do. Um, and then she's good, you know, for the next few months. Yeah. So something goes. Do you ever find that people come to you with that kind of that big desire and then once you get into the work with them, you realize that that's not actually what they wanted, but they want really something else. And that big desire was like the smoke and mirrors that was keeping them from their true longing. Yes, that could happen. I have not had that happen, but it definitely could. I could see it for sure. I could see it too. People are just so layered, you know, and sometimes <laughs> what we think we want, once we really think about it or learn more about ourselves, we realize that we didn't want that. Yeah. Or you realize that's really not what's getting in your way. There's something else completely getting in your way. Yeah. Right. Right. Very interesting. Yeah. So if someone wouldn't necessarily know if they wanted to start coaching yet, are there any books that you could recommend for people to learn more or blogs, websites, what kind of resources can you offer? Well, there's tons of books um, that I love to suggest um, there's like, you know, Simon Sinek, uh, start with why he, that's great. That's about knowing your purpose. Um, Brene Brown, anything by Brene Brown is great. I, I love her daring greatly. Um, and she has this new thing on, on daring leadership and that's big. I've been reading that a lot too. Um, what else? Emotional agility by Dr. Susan David is one of my favorites. And then if you're looking, like if you think you, you really want to be coached, I would just reach out, like go on the ICF website. There's the International Coaching Federation website. You can always find coaches there and read about, you can read more about what coaches do. Um, you can always go to my website, leslieppaparo.com um, and read about my work. And then you could always, I think almost all coaches, I'm, I'm not, I can't speak for everybody, but a lot of us, we will do like a discovery session it's called, where you could kind of like investigate and see if, if the relationship works, if coaching is what you actually want and try it out. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the best way to know is to be brave and take that yeah. first step. Yeah, just do yeah. it. Okay, great. Well, thank you for those resources. Sure. So in closing for our interview today, are there any exciting happenings or offerings in your work that you'd like to share with us? Well, one thing I'm starting to do, which I, it's just in beta mode is doing group coaching. Um, these two colleagues and I, we started a company called MPH and we're, we're planning on putting together group coaching sessions where people can get together and either be coached around inner critic or just bring up one topic and then, and everybody, it's kind of like group therapy, but so, but they could talk to each other and they get, they get the benefits of more than one coach at a time too. Oh, that's interesting. So, so you get more than one coach at a time and you get the benefits of more than one client at a time. Right. It's like there's more community. Right. More community. And then you hear other people's issues and you say, oh, you know what? Maybe I'm not so crazy. Um, and then you could do break. We could do breakout sessions and you could work one on one with people. And mm -hmm. yeah, it's so fun. You're located on the East Coast. Do you do all of this work virtually or are you meeting people somewhere in physicality for the group and for your individual sessions? All virtual. Okay. Yeah. So with your coaching abilities, can you meet with anyone anywhere? Yeah, sure. Yep. Okay. Anyone. Great. And sometimes I even do like walk and talk coaching sessions. Mm -hmm. Like the person does, us, they don't want to sit there and talk. So they, we, we walk together mm -hmm. on that's, the phone. Yeah. That's, uh, sometimes you need to make your feet busy or your hands busy with drawing so right. that your brain can feel clear. Right, right. Right. Okay. Well, what a great offering. I appreciate hearing about the group coaching. It feels like you have a lot of different coaching um, tools in your tool yeah. belt. So. And hats, you know, I wear different hats. Yes. Yeah. 
Well, that's, that's wonderful to hear. Is there anything else that you'd like to shout out to today before we close? No, I just want to thank you. This is great. This was so much fun. Thanks so for the opportunity. I'm so glad. I'm so happy to talk to you. I think it's really important that people understand about coaching and um, you shared so much valuable resources with us. So okay. thank you so much, Leslie, and um, see you next time. Okay. Bye, Kate. Right. Bye.